Are you ready to make your motion graphics absolutely beautiful with gradients? With just a few powerful tricks and clever buffoonery, you can make anything in After Effects truly cinematic. <laughs> let's get started. All right, let's kick this off by creating those clean, beautiful graphics first, as there's so many uses for this. To keep the concept understandable, we can create a simple circle with the ellipse tool and then set the fill to either a linear or a radial gradient, it just doesn't matter. Now with that ready, move your way to the gradient fill and of course, edit the gradient. I like to use vibrant colors that are kind of around the same color palette and you can add additional stops to vary that color. But don't stress about any poor color choices because that won't matter in a few moments, I promise. Unless you're drinking and designing. Hmm. Anyway, move these two points apart to maximize the gradient. And since I'm using a radial, we'll have this hot spot in the middle, which is kind of cool. And to prove that bad color choices don't matter, I'll add a hot pink stroke to this with a large width. Okay. I might be drinking and designing and this looks bad, but let's embrace it by using the Gaussian blur effect and make our vision blurry. I mean, make the graphic blurry, officer. Okay. <laughs> now, add the next culprit, which is CC radial fast blur, and then just increase the amount to around, you know, 90. And this looks actually kind of good, but let's lose our balance by alt clicking the stopwatch here and adding the wiggle to comma 40 expression for a little flickering animation. Additionally, if the colors are just way too vibrant for your touch, a little quick cheat is to use the curves effect to add a little bit of a low contrast look without having to adjust the gradient. I'll also mention that you should obviously use a very light gray or slightly light colored background, which looks great for those clean looks. And to wrap up this gradient, use the noise effect on an adjustment layer to add a cinematic touch to it. And absolutely perfect. Let me show you what you can create with your new powers. You can say use a very large stroke circle that obviously has a linear gradient on it. Then just pump up the Gaussian blur effect like a maniac and then don't use the CC radial fast blur effect and boom, we have another awesome design. And I'll show you some more incredible ways to use your new powers because you can create cinematic work in moments of our motion duck panel that comes with over 50,000 templates here for Premiere Pro and After Effects. You can drop in cinematic assets like light leaks and explosions, use drag and drop transitions and quickly customize highly detailed motion graphics to fit your vision. So be sure to get my free template pack and you can grab these countless assets below. And if you do pick up anything, thank you so much for supporting my channel. All right, to create more and yes, cooler variations of what we already have, if you take that original trippy circle and you right click where it says ellipse path, you can select convert to Bezier path. This will allow you to easily edit the mask or more specifically the path to create something unique like say a Pringles chip. I don't know. But again, don't worry about the design because with our original effects of the normal Gaussian blur, curves if you want to use that, but most importantly, UCC radial fast blur and move the center point to push the blur in any direction that you like. Awesome. For some additional push and some great tips, throw in the original Big Brother CC radial blur and set it to a centered zoom then increase the amount and move the center point over as well to get that blur going also you can use the father radial blur effect and set it to zoom and increase the amount i know there's a lot of radial blurs going on here but we can use all these effects together either in single or double combinations to create something unique and even though these effects are similar and they might be exactly the same i believe they do give some subtle differences but most importantly just be sure to animate any of the blur amounts to give your gradient this flickering effect additionally if you want to give a gradient a hard edge like this we'll just use cc radial blur as a center zoom and increase the amount and set of course your center and if you get this hard edge cut off like this put the cc radial fast blur effect at the top and set the amount to zero perhaps it's me adobe not you but grab the rectangle or pen tool and if you're using a shape layer click tool creates mask and this will allow you to draw out just the mask now go to your compositing options for the cc radial blur effect and click this plus icon to bound the mask to the effect only then feather it out and no problem for another great tip think about using the wiggle paths property inside the shape layer with smooth points a decent size low details and wiggles per second at 0.5 you'll have so many options to create beautiful gradients that are happen to be awesome motion graphics now let's go to the more dark cinematic side of things let's say we just use the cc radial blur with a centered zoom and a low amount 
then keyframe the center point to move from one side to the other side to side, whatever. With an alt click of a stopwatch, use the loop out ping pong expression to loop this forever. Great. Now on your adjustment layer, that should hopefully have the noise effect, add the glow effect. Increase the glow radius and maybe the threshold by a touch, then duplicate the glow and then almost max out that glow radius on the duplicate. Lastly, try using the posterize effect with any levels that just feels right for you. And if that's not cinematic, I don't know what is. Well, maybe this example is more cinematic. You know, I just have a gradient circle here and we can use a repeater with about 30 copies. Then set the repeater's X position to zero and decrease the scale just by a touch. Now go to the transform position in the ellipse here and then move this to any side of the composition like this. I'll move it to the top. Now use a CC radial blur effect with a fading zoom and set the amount to whatever you like. And remember, use the CC radial fast blur effect to fix that hard edge. With your anchor point centered in the middle of your composition, that's so important, duplicate this layer and rotate it. Now do this a few times and go full circle without drinking and designing. <laughs> okay, whatever, excellent. But again, the adjustment layer should have the noise effect and a single glow effect will do this time around. But add the wiggle expression to the glow radius for a glowing flicker. Finally, parent everything to one of those layers and animate the rotation to have this spin. And don't forget to enable motion blur. Very cinematic. Now, the main takeaway from this tutorial is not to overthink the settings, but to mess around with the effects and the tools at your disposal to create something unique because there's so much to create here. Subscribe to be the best and always be creative.